Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Catskull Academy, the series that aims to give you the very best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be covering everything that you need to know about getting started with the market. We're going to look at how to find your nearest interstellar trading center or ITC. We're going to look at how to sell items and how to buy items including using purchase orders. On top of this as well we are going to look at some skills that you can use to make marketeering that little bit more profitable for you. As usual, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Let me know in the comments section down below, or on the various social media channels at the bottom of your screen now. Let me know what videos you want to see me make in future, what topics you want me to cover. And if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me on Patreon. Details are on screen now. That said and done, let's talk about the markets. So I'm drifting out here in Paytor. Now I know this is an ITC, but ultimately I want to talk to you about how to find one of these stations first. Because if you are an Alpha clone, the only place that you can sell items on the market is at ITC's Interstellar Trading Centers in HiSec. Now ultimately, if you go into the market here, which will take a few seconds to load because it just likes to at this point in time, you'll see here at the bottom of the screen there is a bit that says nearby trading centers. If we tap on this, this will bring up a list of all of the nearby trading centers to where you are. In fact, I think it does actually show you every single ITC in the game, so you can scroll up and down this and find all of the crazy different ones all the way out there in Nullsec as well. It is the high sec ones you're going to need to know though, so look for things like Paytor, Nakugard, Istadard, of course everyone knows Jita, but heh, boycott Jita. There is no reason to go to Jita. It's actually not a particularly stable market. It takes you ages to get in if you're not careful. Thousand people in that system at all times. It's just crazy. Go to other systems if you can. So I've come here to Paytor, but if you wanted to go to somewhere, you can come to this list, tap on it here, and you'll see you have set as destination there. That will set you up on autopilot. Thus, you find your nearest ITC. So we're now going to dock up and have a look at this. The first thing we're going to look at is how to sell items on the market. Now, I've been doing some fairly high tier combat encounters recently in my Thrasher, so I've got some loot that I wanted to offload. I've therefore packed the cargo hold of my probe covert ops, and I've flown all the way out to Paytor as my nearest ITC in order to sell it. Now, first things first, you cannot sell items out of the cargo hold of a ship, so we need to go into the menu, into the inventory, and down to the ship's cargo hold, and take all of the items that we want to sell out and into the item hanger of the station that we are selling from. Now, if you have modules that you're looking to sell, these need to be packaged. If you've used those modules and are now looking to sell them, you're going to need to tap on them and hit, the, uh, hit where it says repackaged. The ones on screen now, you can see all have this little square with a line through it. That means those are packaged modules ready for selling, kind of like putting them in a box ready for shipping. Now, of course, once you've got an item in a station ready to sell, you need to know what it's actually going to sell for, what it's worth. So, if we tap on, say, the Mark V Medium Shield Booster here and hit View Market Details, this will show you how they are selling in nearby systems. Now, straight up and down, you can see here, they're selling from anywhere between uh, 800,000 at Whiskerber up to about 1.1 million at the, some of the other nearby stations like Pycura and Jita. Now, Whiskerba is not an ITC. Not a lot of people are going to be buying from that. They can't ship from it. I can therefore dis uh, disregard that price. It doesn't really matter. Maspa is the first ITC I'm looking at, but it is 10 jumps away from my current situation, so I don't necessarily need to go that low. Of course, if I sell an item for major undercutting, I could majorly undercut at, say, 500,000 ISK, and this would sell nearly instantly. However, I'm probably not giving that to someone who actually needs it. There's probably someone going to buy that off the market and put it up at the correct price to make a profit off it. People will sit in markets and just do that. It is a great way of making money. That said as well, it's also damaging the market in order to do that because other people will follow suit and item suddenly becomes cheaper and it devalues in worth. As such, I need to look at where they, uh, where these are selling in regards to where I currently am. Now you can see that 1.1 million is all sort of within 15 to, uh, 15 to 11 jumps. Within 10 jumps of Masper is 845,000. Thus, if I were to put up at 1.1 million, I have to ask myself, are people going to pay 1.1 million, or are they just going to take those extra 10 jumps down to Masper and save themselves uh, 250,000, basically? Ultimately, to me, I don't think they're going to sell. You know, they're not going to go that far. So I'm going to look at just selling mine for a flat 1 million. If we come out then, if I open this up and go to sell, I can now go to the price here and set that at 1.1 million. In fact, no, let's just go for the flat 1 million. 
There we go. Make sure that you've got your decimal places in the right place, that you're not selling for 100,000 when you mean a million, and you're not selling for 10 million when you mean one. Now, I do get a little bit of a warning here that the current item price is higher than the estimated price. The Bank of Luminaire may review the ISK that I, require, uh, I acquire at the end of this. That's just to make sure that I'm not some kind of bot making big money off selling cheap loot. Quantity as well. If I've got, say, 100 of these in, my, in the ship's hold, Sorry, in the item uh, the item hanger at the station, I can choose whether or not I want to put all of those on the market in one go or sell them individually. Here I've only got one, so of course it goes at the one. Finally, the forecast here just is based on whether there are any buy orders nearby, and we're going to discuss buy orders later. Here you can see that there are no suitable buyers in the region, the order will not be completed immediately. That means it goes up onto the market and someone is going to have to actually select this and buy it rather than it's not going to fulfill a buy order. So if I hit sell now, bang, that goes onto the market and you see there I've paid 74,000 in broker's fees. That is ultimately a way that the game takes ISK off the market. You get given ISK, ISK is injected into the economy through things like bounties and ratting and it's taken out of the economy by taxes, which makes sense and it's important for balancing this kind of economy. There are skills that we'll look at later in regards to how to balance that and how to reduce the taxes that you pay, that kind of thing. Now, just to see how that is looking, if we now go into the market itself, which will take a few moments to load because it always does at the moment, here in the bottom right you can see there is a button that says My Orders. The My Orders page shows every item that you have for sale on the market. You can see that Mark V Medium Shield Booster that we just put up is here already. Quantity 1, time left 29 days, selling for a million isk at Paytor 7. Now ultimately if I do tap on this I can cancel it by hitting that red cross. That's if I decide that actually you know what I want that item myself or oh no everyone's undercutting and now they're only selling for 500,000. This thing's never going to sell, let me take it off the market and re-put it up at a new price. Obviously if you take it off the market that broker's fee is lost every time you put it up on the market again you're paying more and more in broker's fees that's to stop you putting it up at effect like say putting it up at a million someone puts up at 950,000 then you put it up at 900,000 then they put it up at 800 it's to stop that basically now talking about the market itself let's have a look at buying things so if we go here just for an example to ships and to frigates and look at the breacher one of my favorite little early game frigates this one is seeded which means the game itself this not just other players oh and that shield booster has sold huzzah we've made nearly a million in isk now of course there is market taxes that have taken off some of that as well plus i'm in a corporation that takes some tax for my sale as well so i haven't quite made that full million back that's actually worth mentioning but hey way done for selling <laughs> so now if I want to buy a ship like a Breacher, I'm going to ignore the fact that there is one at the station here because we want to have a look at some of the other things. So I'm going to scroll right the way down here to everyone's favourite station, Jeter. Imagine that the item you want to buy is only available on Jeter. There are a couple of different options of how we can deal with that. When you tap on it, first things first, you'll see the cost here down at the bottom is 125727 and then I've got different options of how to obtain. First and foremost, though, is pick up by yourself. Pick up by yourself means you're going to pay that flat cost of 125727 but I've got to go and pick it up myself. That's not a big problem if it's something just like cannons or a shield booster or whatever. You can just fly out, put it into the cargo hold of whatever ship you're flying, and then take it to wherever you want it to go. Something like a ship, however, that's a bit more problematic, and you're probably going to need to leave your current ship in a pod, fly all the way out there, grab that ship, and then gradually fly it all the way back to where you actually want it. That is where the other two systems come in. Interstellar Delivery, first and foremost, let's have a look at this one. So you can see here, it's currently at Jita 4, Moon 4, Kaldari Navy Assembly Plant. I really don't want to fly out to Jita if I can help it. So I could get it shipped to pay to 7 here. And if I tap on that, here you can see the price has gone up to 302,071. Ultimately, the reason for that is because this goes now into a hauling system. Other players can pick that up from Jita and deliver it out to Paytor, and they will earn a profit for doing so. So basically, I'm paying them to deliver it to me. It's like paying shipping on anything, like if you're going on Amazon or whatever. And usually, the further away you are, this does, pay, does rack up a little bit more. But, of course, that's a great way to get it out of Jita and into my current system. If no one delivers this, I believe that the game itself will actually deliver it automatically in 24 hours time if no player picks it up so if you don't need it urgently that's a great way to get it to a system that you may not want to fly out to 
The other option, however, is regional delivery, and this is actually really, really useful with Jita. Because Jita tends to have these massive queues outside, you see that like there's only a thousand people in the system, and you'll have like 900 people in, say, uh, New Kaldari, just spamming that gate trying to get in themselves. Jita can be a bit of a nightmare to get to. That's where regional delivery comes in. If we set regional delivery and then look at the different destinations, when these load, you'll see that these are all in the same same region as Jita. It means that rather than going all the way to Jita itself, you can have it delivered instantly to a station just outside Jita. So, for example, I know that Itamos, uh, Itamo is a, a system just next to Jita, as is uh, Periphery, that kind of thing. You can have these shipped to a system outside of Jita. It does cost a little bit extra, but it does, again, stop you having to jump into the blasted Jita system. No one likes going there. You can pick a system. And in fact, here you can see Unpass 6 is a little bit closer as well. I could have that immediately sent there, so I don't have to jump quite as far, and I avoid Jita at the same time. So let's actually have a look at that one. If I tap into there, you'll see that the cost is 100, uh, 143,000 up from the 127. That's not bad at all. I would rather do that than jump all the way to Jita. So I'm going to actually purchase that there. Now you'll see that this now has put that into my uh, into my items. So if we come out and back into the inventory, once that loads, if I go into personal assets, you'll see that it has everything at all the different stations that we use. There we are at Pater at the moment, everything I've got here. Unpass, nine jumps out, there is that breacher. I can tap down here to set that as my autopilot destination so I can go and pick that up. I'm not actually going to go and do that just yet because there's a few other bits and pieces that we want to talk about as well. Now there is another way to purchase items that you want and that is through buy orders. Now buy orders are kind of like putting up a wanted ad at your local supermarket or in your local newspaper or Gumtree or whatever it is that you do there. It's basically you actively looking for an item that is not currently available to sale um, and you're saying this is how much you're willing to pay for it. It allows you to purchase things on your terms. Now for example I'm looking for a Republic Fleet afterburner. I really want one of these to fit onto my Slasher 2 so let's go into the market and see how much they're selling for. Ah, oh, there's none of them available. Okay, so I can either go to initiate acquisition here, or on the left hand side here, I can tap through to have a look at buyers. This actually gives me an idea of if I'm selling, what people are willing to immediately pay, but we'll come back to that in a moment. We're going to start off by going to initiate acquisition. Now, I think a, re a reasonable price to pay for a Republic Fleet small afterburner is about, say, a million isk. I saw there was one on there for 19,000. No one's ever going to sell you a Republic Fleet afterburner for 19,000. All you're doing is wasting the broker fees um, and using up your uh, up your slots. So anyway, I think a reasonable amount to pay would be 1 million. So if I set that and hit OK, I can then decide how many of these I want to buy, whether I've got just one ship that I want to fit out or 125 ships that I want to fit. I can just leave that as the one for here, and then I would choose where I want to have that delivered to. Frankly, pay to 7 is good enough for me. It's my nearest ITC. I'm quite happy with that. At which point, if I press order, it'll put up a buy order for 1 million, uh, 1 million isk, and I pay 74,000 isk there in broker fees, which is basically the, the game's way of sort of taking that little bit of extra money. It's, it's, it's how I'm paying for the fact that I don't have to keep checking the money um, and going out there and buying it, you know, and going out there and picking it up myself. It means once someone puts this on the market for 1 million isk or less, it will automatically come to me. If you remember when we looked on the market earlier when we were selling, there was a forecast button. That forecast, if it goes green with a tick, means that there is someone who will get it immediately for, your purchase, uh, for the price you're paying because they have a buy order set. So let's actually have a look at some of these. I know that right now, because we've got the uh, the uh, trainer caracals and that out at the moment, that the medium missile launches are selling really quite well at the moment. People are, uh, they are in high demand. So if we go across to the Mark V medium missile launcher and then down to the sell orders, we can see here that people are willing to buy these for 13,000. Someone at Itrin 5 has put up a purchase order for four of these at 13,000. So if I come back out into the, uh, into the cargo hold here, and I go to these Mark V medium missiles. If I were to then go to sell that on the market at now, let's have a look, four of those at 13,000, those will now instantly sell and go straight across to that guy. 
I mentioned earlier that there are some skills related to marketeering that can increase your profitability and make it easier for you to sell stuff on the market. Now, it's my personal opinion that everyone should have at least a basic competency in that, and fortunately, it appears that the devs agree because if you've been doing the advanced tutorials, you will get a skill chip that increases the abilities in those particular skills. So huzzah, yay for that. Hopefully you're now realizing why on day one I tried to drill into you all that yes, you need to be doing those advanced tutorials. Now the skills in question are here under social science. If we tap here on this and go down to trade, you can see that there is trade level three. I've actually got that straight out from doing those advanced tutorials, same with accounting. Now, the reason I recommend these is because if we actually have a look at what these do, trade itself gives you the ability to post multiple market orders. Otherwise, you're going to put up one item, have to wait for it to sell, then put up the next item, wait for that to sell, and so on and so forth. If, like me, you've just come back from doing a load of ratting, and you've got a whole ton of stuff you want to sell on the market, you want to be able to put these up as many as you can. As you go down as well, you get number of personal contracts, which is the ability to send out to other players, which we'll cover in just a brief moment, um, and then eventually corporation contracts as well, but that's a topic for a completely different video. The second skill to look at is accounting. Again, the advanced tutorials will get you to accounting three. Um, what this ultimately does is reduce the broker's fee for putting stuff on the market and also reduces the sales tax. This means that when you put an item up for, uh, for bid on the market, you pay less to post it and the game takes less of your actual money away when someone buys it. Both incredibly useful skills to have there. Now, finally, I was going to talk to you all about contracts. These are a way of directly selling from one person to another. So especially in your corporation, if you're looking to sell stuff between individual players, if you are a miner and someone is looking to buy a load of your ores or minerals or whatever, or if you're a shipbuilder looking to sell to one of your corp mates and don't want to put it on the market, this is how you do it. Now, basically, I do need to point out this does require Omega. The reason this requires an Omega subscription is to stop real money transaction. Otherwise, someone could set up a bot to go and do a load of mining and then just use uh, these to send it for free to one major character that then sells it, makes profit for those RMT websites. That is why it is Omega. Now, you will need Omega to do this, as I said. Come to the contract page, tap on contract here in the bottom, and you'll see that this is an item exchange. We want to set it to private, and you'll get the option then to type in a name for someone to go to. So, for example, for me, I want to sell something to my own alt. So if I put in Catskull Captain, which is his name there, hit search, that'll add that in, and then I go to next. I then choose which station the loop that I want to hand across is at. So for example, here at Paytor, if I wanted to send across the returned small, um, these things here, the decomposers, and I can hit uh, next on that, or I can come back and I can actually say, you know what, let's send him all of these things. He'll love that. I can then go to next, and then it, you have here how long you want this to last for, one day, three day, one week, two weeks. If you know that the person's going to be online today, keep it on one. If you think they're only going to be on in a week's time, set it for a week or two. You then have the I'll receive or I'll pay. I'll pay is if you are sending them money. If, for example, I needed my alt to get a little bit more, uh, more isk and I wanted to give him items for fitting a ship, I could put those items in here and say, yep, I want to send across 10,000 isk. Now, I don't want to do that. I actually want to have a look at how much my alt is going to pay me or if I'm sending across to another player, how much they're going to pay me. I've said to you, yeah, I'll sell you those five decomposers for 100,000 each. Therefore, I'm going to need 500,000 isk back from you in return. I could also say, you know, hi, buddy, there in the, yeah, <laughs> in the contract description. Go to next, and it will give you then the option of actually sending that through. Now, you'll see that when we look at this here, it gives you a breakdown of everything. That, uh, that person will pay me 500,000 ISK, so I will receive, I, the person making that contract, will receive 500,000 ISK. The person sent, uh, receiving that contract will then receive those four turrets, the five decomposers, and the two, uh, the, the two snub-nosed there as well. Now, you can see the related fees here. There is a 20,000 ISK broker's fee, a 20,000 ISK transaction tax, and a 12,500 ISK deposit. Now, of those, I will get the deposit back. The broker's fee and the transaction tax are gone. If I hit create on this now, those are gone for good, even if I cancel that contract. So if I do actually close this down now, um, because I don't really want to send all that stuff across to him, um, across to that particular op. 
Now you can see here that you've got other ones as well. I'm sending across to a corp mate here. He was asking for some of the items that I picked up yesterday while ratting. Uh, 10,000 disc for each of those. I'm sending him five. A total of 50,000 isk I'll receive when he comes online and actually claims that. And that's how contracts work. It really is that simple. It's a great way for moving stuff between corp mates, but again, it does require Omega. Anyway, folks, that does cover everything that I wanted to talk to you all about in regards to the market. Obviously, this is how to sell, how to buy, and it is a vital aspect of EVE Echoes. It's something you're going to need to do if you want to make money, and obviously, you're going to be wanting to buy stuff off the market from time to time as well, like I've just bought a new ship, or if you're looking to buy fittings. If you go out and do a load of ratting, end up with a load of money, you're going to be able to want to buy stuff for yourself. If you're ma manufacturing or mining, you may want to be able to buy blueprints and all that kind of thing as well from the market. That's how you do it. Anyway, folks, good luck on the markets. It can be an absolutely brutal place. Quite frankly, I would rather be out in space with a cannon uh, pointed at me rather than uh, trying to understand marketeering and trying to cut a profit here. It's not my main scene. So I just wanted to give you the basics of how to survive on the markets. Let me know how you get on with the markets, how you're selling, what items you're making a lot of money off, that kind of thing down in the comment section below. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.